everyone please give me a quick thumbs up okay just checking it again great great so welcome all of you in this dermatology session and let's discuss the questions which came in the recent NEET PG 2024 from dermatology. The first question which we had, uh, we had a 25 year old patient with a hair loss that follows a particular pattern. You can see here in this particular image, they have shown a moth eaten type of alopecia. And actually few students told me that there was mention in the question that there is a moth eaten type of alopecia. There's a history of flat lesion on the anal area as well as rash on the body, what is the causative agent? Now, please remember this type of, like if we zoom the image, this type of moth eaten alopecia, it is very characteristic of syphilis. Now, for syphilis, you see flat lesions, especially the secondary syphilis patients, there are flat moist lesions on the genitalia. And what are these flat moist lesions called as? They are known as, the flat moist lesions are known as, anyone? They are known as condyloma lata and the rashes on the body in secondary syphilis you can see that there are multiple lesions all over the body so it can be the secondary syphilis patient with moderate alopecia and the answer becomes treponema microsporum means tenia hepatitis please remember there is nothing for us to explain the anal regions and rashes in a tenia patient sporothrix has a very different sort of a presentation you get a linear nodules or ulcers and melasthesia, which is the causative agent for pitreas and versicolor, also never present with this type of clinical feature. So in this question, the correct answer should be option number one. I want all of you to please keep correcting me if there is any more points given in the question because uh, I was told by some students just now, like few minutes before starting, that there was given in the question that this is a very classical type of more beaten alopecia. Now there is a similar question uh, or there is one more question from the hair topic. I think this was given in the evening session. And this was the question, a five-year-old child presented with focal areas of hair loss. There is associated scaling and itching and you have to identify the condition. Please remember, here you can see a patchy hair loss. Whenever there is patchy hair loss, there can be diagnosis of alopecia areata. There can be diagnosis of fungal infection. But here, one of the very important points which is given is scaling and itching. You will never see scaling and itching in the patients of alopecia areata. Uh, I think there was one of the options which includes alopecia areata also in the question. This answer becomes tenia, the fungal infection, which is the non-scarring type of alopecia, the non-inflammatory type of alopecia. So tenia, capitis, mainly the endothrix varieties or ectotrix variety present with this type of patchy hair loss. So one session in the morning, one session in the evening, we got from the same topic and that is the hair loss. One was the uh, tenia patient and another was the uh, syphilis patient. Coming to the next question, a young patient complains of painful vesicular rash near the genitals. So when you see vesicular eruptions on the genitals, please remember the classical diagnosis becomes herpes genitalis. Please remember herpes genitalis which is herpes simplex virus 2. It manifests with painful vesicular rash. Now many students told me that ma'am chancroid also present with vesicular genital rash or sorry presents with painful genital rash but the only difference between a chancroid patient and herpes is there is no vesicles in chancroid patient. You will never see any preceding history of any preceding history of the vesicles in the chancroid patient. Okay so sort of there was one option as alopecia areata in the last question and even if alopecia areata is given in the last question of hair loss the itching and scaling just give me a second so one of the option which is given here in this question is alopecia areata and even if alopecia areata was given in this particular question still the answer remains tenia the reason is because scaling and itching you will never see in the patient of alopecia areata if it is itching and scaling it will never become a patient of alopecia areata okay now coming to the next the, the present question uh they are saying that ma'am there was an image given in this particular question if the image given, was it an image of vesicle or there were erosions? Was it a vesicle image, Divya, or there were some erosions given in the question? If they write vesicle, if they write vesicle, please remember, if they write vesicle, it has to be herpes because chancroid never presents with vesicles. Only painful erosions are seen in the patients of 
the chancroid. So the answer becomes herpes injection. Okay, clear? Coming to the next question, identify the mark structure. Now here, this image is given. You can see that there is a hair. What is this structure? This is the erecta pili muscle. In your hair, there is one more structure which drains and that is your sebaceous gland. Now sebaceous gland, erecta pili, sweat gland and the hair papilla, these were the options given. Please remember the best answer should be the sebaceous gland. You know that sebaceous gland, it is a holocrine gland that always opens into the hair follicle. Now from here, the sebum is released into the hair follicle and from the hair follicle, the sebum comes out on the surface of the skin. So please remember in this particular question, the answer of the mark should be sebaceous gland. Okay. Okay, so Vidya and Mountain back is saying that in the last question, the vesicles are present. The image was given with vesicles and if the vesicles were mentioned, the answer becomes herpes. Okay, in this question, it becomes sebaceous gland because this is a very classical image of sebaceous gland which is attached on the hair follicle. The next question is, we have a 35-year-old patient with a hypopigmented anesthetic patch. There is nerve thickening also mentioned. The intradermal test is done. Histopathology image is shown below. Pick one of the correct statements regarding the condition. If you see here, this is a very classical granuloma. What type of granuloma you see in a patient of leprosy? See, hypopigmented anesthetic patch. This indicates that we are dealing with a patient of leprosy. In leprosy patient, towards the tuberculoid hole, we get a very classical epithelioid granuloma. Similar to that of TB, cutaneous TB. Here also we get epithelioid granuloma. Can you see this picture? There is a very characteristic T cell, T lymphocytes surrounding the granuloma. This is your epithelioid granuloma. These are the T lymphocytes around the granuloma. This indicates that we are dealing with a patient of tuberculoid leprosy. In tuberculoid leprosy, the CMI is very strong. Cell mediated immunity is very strong. And when the CMI is strong, the intradermal test becomes positive. What is that intradermal test known as anyone? Lepromin test. Please remember that the lepromin test is positive and this becomes a patient of tuberculoid leprosy with positive lepromin test. This cannot be lepromatous leprosy because of two reasons. First, in lepromatous leprosy, no tuberculoid granulomas are seen. In lepromatous leprosy, you see macrophage, foam cells. Plus, the intradermal test is negative in the patients of lepromatous leprosy. So, option number two is not correct. Even in borderline patients, you will not see this type of classical image of the granuloma formation. In borderline, you see mixture. You can see macrophages also. Very less granulomas are visible. So, I, I have to mark one. The best answer would be tuberculoid leprosy with positive antigen. Okay. Okay, so mountain back is saying that in this question, it was mentioned that there was a solitary nodule on a left hand. Now, please remember, 1 to 5 plaques or 1 to 5 lesions is more in favor of tuberculoid pole because when the immunity is strong, the disease becomes very localized. Okay, so nodule was given. So, obviously, the best answer in this question becomes option number 8. Even if nodule is given, the answer still remains the same. Okay, even if nodule is given, the answer still remains the same and that is tuberculoid leprosy. Because see, you cannot think of a lepra reaction right now because if they are giving nodule and if it is, if you are thinking of the erythema nodosum leprosum, that is type 2 lepra reaction, they should mention something about the pain associated, fever and other systemic features. Nothing like that was mentioned right in the question. Just a nodule was given and they have given this image which shows characteristic granulomas of tuberculoid leprosy. Okay, clear with this? Coming to the next question. Now, this is a little difficult question and I think this question should not be given in your exam. The answer of this question is morphia. What is morphia? There is cutaneous fibrin deposition. The fibroblasts, they come and they distribute fibrin specifically in the dermis. And this is an example of scleroderma. See, scleroderma, we have divided them into two groups. One is localized where there is only the cutaneous lesion and we call it morphia. Another is systemic, where along with the skin deposition of fibrin, you see the systemic feature and we have given a name systemic sclerosis to that. Now, this is a patient of morphia because due to deposition of fibrin, when you take the biopsy, it gives an appearance like a box. Normally, when you take a biopsy, the biopsy, it tapers when it goes down towards the 
subcutaneous tissue there will be a tapering towards the subcutaneous tissue but here if you see it is exactly like a box you take a biopsy and the sample looks very hard like a box that is a feature of morphia so please remember for this question the correct answer should be morphia okay uh divya is saying uh, okay I'll, i'll come to your question divya divya is saying that for the question which we got for labeling they have given the options erectile palmar muscle sebaceous gland eccrine gland and apocrine sweat glands and they asked <clears throat> okay they have asked multiple options were given okay so even if in that question they have given the options like eccrine and apocrine sweat gland divya the answer should remain sebaceous gland because that's a very characteristic type of sebaceous gland apocrine glands they are little more deeper and they have a long duct which is opening above the duct of the sebaceous gland okay now for this question the answer is morphia because of the box shape pattern the answer becomes option number 1 it is morphia the answer is option number 1 morphia the biopsy becomes like a box so option number 1 becomes the answer in this question coming to the next picture or next question female presented with rashes on her back as well as on her palm now there is a histopath image given now again this is a little difficult question but we have read this question in our uh, classes just give me a second if you see this question if you see this histopath can you see that in this histopath there is alternate dark and light band you can see that this is the stratum corneum and you can see here there is some blue color cells which is the nucleus of stratum corneum and here you see there is no nucleus again there is a nucleus containing cells in the stratum corneum again there is no nucleus this type of alternate nucleus no nucleus nucleus no nucleus this nucleus containing part is known as parakeratosis and this part is known as orthokeratosis so alternate parakeratosis orthokeratosis this is a very classical checkerboard pattern seen in the patients of pityriasis rubra pilaris in prp patient if you examine their body if you examine their body they have red patches erythematous papules all over and there is very classical island of sparing can you see these two areas they are not involved so these are island of sparing and when you examine their palm and sole you get a yellowish color thickening of their palm and sole that is known as prp center please remember the correct answer of this question becomes option number 1 pityriasis rubra pilaris they have mentioned that the lesions are orange in color orange color lesions again a very important clue towards the diagnosis of pityriasis rubra pilaris their palm sole becomes yellowish orange and that gives an appearance as if the patient has some yellowish discoloration okay clear so please remember the answer of this question becomes pityriasis rubra pilaris the histopath is very characteristic you have alternate dark and light band of uh, orthokeratosis and parakeratosis in a patient of pityriasis rubra pilaris this is i think the easiest question you can get in your exam this is fish net pattern of pemphigus vulgaris very classical fish net pattern of pemphigus vulgaris okay understood i think nothing no need of explanation here the intercellular deposits gives a fish net or a chicken wire appearance so the answer becomes option number 2 that is pemphigus vulgaris this question we have discussed i think this was the last question now here there is a little confusion few students said that there was no image but few students said that there were images the question is patient presented 25 year old patient with papular acne acne which is papule means it is grade 2 and please remember grade 2 acne what is the treatment of choice if you remember my class grade 1 topical retinoid grade 2 topical antibiotic grade 3 systemic antibiotic grade 4 systemic retinoid if they have mentioned that it is a papular acne the answer becomes topical tepson now here there is so much of confusion and that is why i want all of you to tell me what was the exact question given was it a papular acne okay so papular word is not mentioned did they give you anything related to the pimple did they give you the same image or the image was better image was more focused image of a face with acne was given what appearance you see do you see a papule or pustule
what do you see when there was an image like see this particular question can only be solved when you get the correct image because see if they are mentioning some or if they are giving you an image which contains some pustules that becomes topical or that becomes oral antibiotic we usually prefer giving systemic doxy over minocycline because minocycline has more pigmentary potential if it is just a plain papular acne we give topical dapsone and if there is even a single nodule we give systemic isotretinoin so i want you all to help me that what was the exact image given only on that basis we can give you a correct answer sort of call duty mountain black so please remember for pustular acne oral antibiotic for papular acne it is topical antibiotic that should be mentioned okay and i think there is one more question which uh, which is the last question i think i'm not missing out on any question okay so they are giving multiple papular lesions see if they give papule in the question the answer becomes topical antibiotics so vardan if they have given uh, the papule just papules on the face it should be topical epson which is a topical antibiotic but again if even they have given some pustules then the answer becomes the oral antibiotic if it is papular lesions definitely the answer becomes topical antibiotic coming to the last question now here there is a hair shaft with fungal conidia you can see that this is the hair and you can see something inside the hair if you see the fungus inside the hair that becomes endothrix that becomes endothrix and if it is endothrix you know that endothrix variety is a black dot variety and causative agent is trichophyton there are two causative agent for endothrix so what is that trichophyton tonsurans and trichophyton violation so this is an endothrix variety and the answer becomes option number 1 okay so this was the last question i want everyone uh, was there any more question from dermatology topic i think these are the only questions which i got i want all of you to please keep posting on the same chat if there is any more questions which we were not able to recollect okay so with this we are done with the dermatology recall okay see if the trichophyton is not given now again if the trichophyton is not given in the option <clears throat> among the best the answer becomes microsporum see you all know that epidermophyton e does not affect h epidermophyton does not affect your hair so option number 3 cannot be the answer if trichophyton is not given the best answer becomes microsporum fungal infection due to microsporum is also seen but epidermophyton will not become the answer okay so with this we are ending the session here all the best to all of you please keep posting the questions if you have any more in the chat section so thank you all of you good night